Welcome to this video, where we'll go through the NBeats architecture. The good news is that the architecture is far simpler than the TFT one, but the bad news, well, there are no bad news. This is a positive corner of the internet. Let me quickly show you the overall architecture. We have the time series, which is here at the top. We it, this is then filtered and processed into several different stacks from one up until M. Each stack is then composed of different blocks from one to K. From a block, you can either get a forecast or you can get a residual, which then flows into the next stack. Each block is composed of four fully connected layers that either produce a backcast or a forecast. The goal of this video is to go through in detail this architecture and really understand the flow. Everything starts with our time series. We have the forecasting period, which is what we want to forecast. And we also have this look back period. How much we look back in the past to predict the future? And um, this is what we have always discussed. We use the past to predict the future. After determining the look back and forecast periods, we start with stack one. Stack one takes the look back period data and begins processing it to make initial predictions. For example, if our look back period is the past 24 hours of electricity usage, stack one uses this data to forecast the next 24 hours. This initial forecast and the residuals, which are the differences between the predicted and the actual values, are then passed to the next stack for further refinement. After stack one processes the look back period data and generates its initial forecast, it also produces residuals. These residuals, which are the differences between, of course, the predicted values and the actual values, are then passed to stack two. Stack two uses these residuals to refine the forecast further. For example, if stack one predicted 150 kilowatt hour, but the actual value was 155, stack two will use this five a kilowatt hour residual to improve its own prediction, creating a more uh, accurate overall forecast. As the process continues, each subsequent uh, stack refines the forecast further. Stack 3 will take the residuals from stack 2 and use them to make even more accurate predictions. This iterative refinement continues through all the stacks up to stack M. Finally, the forecasts from all the stacks are combined to produce the global forecast. For example, if stack one predicts a spike, stack two adjusts for trend and stack M refines for long-term patterns. The global forecast integrates all of these insights to give the most accurate prediction possible. Think of stacks as different layers of analysis. Stack one might focus on capturing short-term patterns such as hourly fluctuations in electricity usage, while stack two might focus on long-term patterns, such as daily trends. Each stack processes the input data to contribute uniquely to the overall forecast. Within each stack, the data is processed through multiple blocks. Let's focus on block one. Block one takes the stack input, which could be the original look back period data or the residuals from the previous stack. It then uses this input to generate a forecast and a back cast. For example, if block one receives the past 24 hours of electricity usage as input, it produces a forecast for the next 24 hours and the back cast to approximate the input data. The back cast helps in refining the model's understanding and the forecast. Uh, contributes to the overall prediction. Each stack is made up of multiple blocks that work sequentially. After block one processes uh, the stack input and generates its forecast and backcast, block two 
mistakes in both the residuals from block 1 and the original stack input. This tool input helps block 2 refine the predictions more effectively. For example, block 1 might produce a forecast that is slightly off, and block 2 uses the residuals to correct these errors while also considering the original data to enhance the overall accuracy. This process continues through all blocks within the stack, ensuring that each block builds upon the previous one to improve the forecast. And this will continue, of course, through all blocks up to block K. By combining the residuals within the original input at each step, each block can build upon the corrections of the previous block, enhancing the overall forecast accuracy. This iterative refinement within each stack ensures that the predictions become increasingly accurate as the process through the blocks. After all the blocks within a stack have processed the data, the final residual from the last block, so block K, is passed on through the next stack. For instance, uh, stack 1 processes the lookback uh, period data through its uh, blocks, producing a final residual. This residual will become the input for stack 2, which then repeats the process of refining the forecast using its own blocks. This staging of residuals ensures that each subsequent stack builds upon the refinements of the previous one, progressively improving the forecast accuracy. This iterative process continues until the last stack, stack M, which contributes to the global forecast by integrating the refined predictions. Throughout the NBITS architecture, each stack refines the forecast by using residuals from the previous stack, ensuring that errors are continuously corrected and predictions become more accurate. Now, let's go one uh, step deeper, right? So within each block, the input data is processed through a four-layer fully connected stack. This stack transforms the block input, extracting features that help in generating the backcast and the forecast. The block input can be either the original stack input or the residuals from the previous uh, block, right? So it can be either this or um, it can be the residuals. So if you are deeper into the blocks. And overall, this process is done at each uh, of these blocks. And the fully connected layer within each block is designed to handle the data transformations and feature extraction. So after the data passes through the fully connected layers, it splits into two paths, one for the backcast and another one for the forecast. The backcast output aims to approximate the input data, helping to refine the residuals that are passed to the next block. The forecast output uh, provides the predicted values for the forecast period. In summary, the NBITS architecture uses a series of stacks, each made up of multiple blocks, to iteratively refine forecasts. Each block processes the input data through a four-layer fully connected stack, producing both backcast and forecast outputs. The backcast helps correct residuals, while the forecast improves future predictions. The NBIT architecture starts by defining the lookback and the forecast periods. The lookback period represents the historical data used to make predictions, while the forecast period is the future time frame we aim to predict. The process starts with stack 1, which takes the lookback period data and generates initial uh, predictions. These predictions and the residuals, so the differences between predicted and actual values, are then passed on to the next stack for future refinement. Within each stack, multiple blocks work sequentially to process the data. Each block receives input from the previous block and the original stack input. This dual input system allows blocks to refine the predictions uh, effectively. And then, of course, each block processes the input data through the fully connected uh, stack. The iterative process continues across all stacks, with each stack using the residuals from the previous one to further refine 
the predictions. The stacking of residuals ensures continuous correction of errors and enhancement of forecast accuracy. The final global forecast is an aggregate of predictions from all stacks, integrating insights from both short-term and long-term patterns. And that is it. I'll see you in the next video.